Okay, now that we've seen how to use linear programming to come up with a bid price we can use in our inventory control mechanism, we're going to take this model one step further and address the assumption that the demand is deterministic. And when we address that assumption, we're going to turn this linear program into a nonlinear program. The models generally work the same. We're going to just change the way we model demand in, these, uh, in this formulation. So I'm not going to go through uh, how the, uh, you know, the whole formulation or how you get a bid price. We're just going to change the way we model demand. And you're going to see that's fairly significant, significant change. Uh, and it's going to impact how we solve the model as well. So just a quick review. Uh, when we went through our model in the last video, we said that our objective was to maximize revenue by summing up the number of seats that we allocate on each itinerary, on each ODF, and we multiply those seats by the fare uh, that is uh, the fare level for each one of those seats. And then we uh, do that subject to a couple of constraints. The first is that we don't allocate more seats than we have capacity on the airplanes. And then the second was that we didn't allocate more seats than we had demand for those seats. Well, this is where one change is going to happen on this constraint. And then we're going to add a term in this objective function. And that's going to change the model dramatically. So I thought the way we would go through this is let me just take this model and show you what changes to address this assumption rather than starting from scratch. So I wrote down here if I can scroll. So here's my nonlinear program. And so far what I've done is I've just written down the common, uh, the things that are in common to the linear program. So this is the same objective function and the same capacity constraint. So you can see that there. Same objective function, same capacity constraint. And I've left out this demand constraint because that's no longer uh, relevant to our nonlinear program. OK, now let's see what we have to do to change the original linear program to address this assumption of deterministic demand. And that's going to turn it into a nonlinear program. So here's our original objective function. And this is where we're assuming deterministic, to, excuse me, deterministic demand. So when we allocate X seats, and then we calculate revenue by saying the revenue will be the number of seats that I allocate on this itinerary multiplied by the fare that I'm getting for each one of those seats, I'm assuming that with probability one, with certainty, that each one of those seats will be filled. Uh, so in other words, that I have demand for every one of those seats. Well, the way we're going to change that is instead of assuming probability 1, so you could almost assume we have a, a 1 over here that we're multiplying this by probability 1, we're going to take that out and we're going to add a probability statement here. and We're going to call it P bar times uh, X ODF. And I'm going to go through the, um, the probability function behind this. But for now, all you have to really understand is that to make this a probabilistic statement, we take that one out. Instead of assuming that demand will um, arrive with probability one, we now assume that demand will arrive with some probability associated with the distribution function that we have estimated from some forecasting system. So now my, object, my objective function to calculate revenue, I'm not simply summing the fare times the number of seats. I'm multiplying the fare multiplied the num by the number of seats I've allocated to each fare, multiplied, that the multiplied by the probability that each one of those seats will actually be filled. So this is now the probability that I actually have demand for each one of the seats that I've allocated. And that's going to be a more accurate uh, representation of total demand. Now let's take a look at the constraints. Well, the capacity strength does not change at all. We're still uh, going to make sure that we don't allocate more seats on, on any itinerary that would exceed the capacity of a, a flight leg that is um, part of that itinerary. 
then we're going to eliminate the demand constraint that we had up here because we no longer have to be concerned that we are allocating uh, fewer seats than we have demand because we've sort of incorporated that in the objective function. The only other thing we're going to do here is put a, a non-zero constraint in here so that we're not uh, allocating um, less than zero seats. Oh, that's backwards. Okay, in concept, that's it. We've just turned a fairly straightforward linear program into a more complex nonlinear program by changing the uh, demand assumption from deterministic to stochastic, so uh, by incorporating this uh, probability statement. Now, in theory, this should give us a much more accurate uh, estimation of total revenue, which will give us more accurate bid prices. In reality, how much better this model performs over the linear program depends on how well we can estimate this probability function. And this, become, this comes uh, from our demand forecast. So let's go a little bit further into what is behind this probability statement here. Okay, let's assume that demand is normally distributed with mu and sigma. So normal distribution, and from our demand forecast, we have been able to estimate the PDF, the density function. So let's, let's draw that down here, and we have a symmetric distribution, and there's some, some mean here, mu, and we're going to call this point here the capacity of the aircraft. Well, we know that the total area under this curve integrates to 1, but if we set a capacity limit, or this could be a, a booking limit at the itinerary level, then there's going to be some portion of this demand that we spill because we can't carry that demand. So the first thing we need to do to get an accurate estimate out of this probability function is to calculate this area of spill. So we're going to integrate from C to uh, infinity. So let's actually write that down. So spill is going to be the integral from C to infinity of the demand that's in X as of this capacity constraint. So we're going to take demand X above uh, C and then multiply that by the uh, fx dx, by the function. Now, of course, what we're actually after is an estimate of demand. That's often called traffic in the literature uh, when they're talking about nonlinear programs. So let's use that. And that is the estimate of total demand, uh, yep, total demand, minus the estimate of spill. So in other words, as we look at our, our uh, function here, so it's this total area, so the total area of demand, or so it's the, it's the integral of the total area, so the summation of the probability multiplied by the demand uh, that's represented by this curve. So you take the total estimate of demand, and then you subtract out spill to get your estimate of traffic. And that's going to be this function here, this integral, which is simply this integral here, so from negative infinity, negative infinity out here, oh gosh, that's hard to write that sideways, call that infinity, uh, so negative infinity over here, that's better, to this c, so we want this area of the curve multiplied by the demand, so it's going to be x times f of x dx, and then plus this point here, c, times all of the demand that is above c. So we're going to take, gee, that's a little bit, try that, write that, c here, multiplied by uh, the demand above c, uh, let me write that again. So from this integral from c to positive affinity times f of x dx. 
so I kind of skipped a step here. I didn't really write, um, you know, this this minus this. I just went to the solution. But I think you can see, rather going through the math, this first term is this integral multiplied that by the demand, and then the second term is simply this point multiplied by all of the demand uh, above that. And when you sum those two terms together, you get, according to this probability function, an estimate of demand. But you would take this and substitute it with uh, this, these terms down here. And then that would be your, you know, now you can really see, I think, the nonlinearity uh, that's been placed in the objective function. Now, okay, I went through that pretty quick. I mean, there are other, other videos. You could look at all the, um, the series of probability uh, videos that I have out there if you want to understand this better. But the, uh, the point is that, you know, when I said earlier that, in theory, the nonlinear program should give a better estimate of bid prices because we're, we're now uh, doing away with this assumption that demand is deterministic when in reality we know it's not. Well, the improvement in your estimate in, of bid prices is going to be highly dependent on just how well you've estimated this probability density function. And that comes from your forecasting system. So if you got mu and sigma wrong, or you know, not wrong, but you, know, you didn't get a good estimate of mu and sigma from your forecasting system, then these statements that are relying on that are going to add inaccuracy into the objective function uh, instead of improving it. So this is where you get into when you're evaluating when one model is you know, better for your implementation than the other. You have to look beyond just the mathematical formulation and see if you can provide accurate inputs to the model. We're forecasting here. This is at the itinerary level. There's a lot of small numbers, and this is quite difficult to do accurately. Um, so the inputs are going to determine the... Uh, the accuracy of the outputs here. So you have to consider that when you're, de you, when you're trying to determine whether this, this is the right model uh, for any particular implementation. The other thing this is, this is uh, more difficult to solve than the linear program. Uh, more difficult in the sense, I mean, there are solution techniques out there. It can be solved or at least, you know, within some criteria, but it takes longer. Uh, so you know, in, in an implementation, your ability to optimize quickly, which allows you to optimize more often, is an important consideration. Okay, so that's all we're going to do on nonlinear programming for now. Uh, there's certainly a lot more to this. If you have any questions, you can leave them in comments, and we'll consider doing a, a more in-depth video on some of these um, topics if you'd like. Thanks for watching. Bye.